Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Barum Engines. Right, first thing for me to do today guys, or first thing I've been doing, is the Cosworth. So this is the Cosworth head for Steve. It's all blasted and looking like absolute brand new. Um, cleaned all the ports up. Now Steve did say that this has had new guides at one point and to be honest with you he's got a new set of valves which sometimes the new set of valves are a little bit bigger on the stems um, and I've tried them down the guides absolutely perfect we're not going to gain anything by putting new guides in this so we'll leave the guides you can see I've cut the seats so it's all looking fresh and now I'm just giving it a reface and we can see just by where it hasn't cleaned about here that that's very slightly bent that's about a three thou cut on that um, so the bottom end what I've done this morning guys check the gaps on the rings the gaps on these standard Cosworth Marla pistons um, are always perfect so never have to do anything with those uh, the pistons we put our own pockets in you can see I finished those yesterday and I did a dummy build now the only thing is Steve didn't send the mains caps with these but I've got the bearings which are over here um, that's a set of core plugs on top. You can see I've put new core plugs in it. But what I've had to do is put the crankshaft in the base of the block without any caps, hold it in, put a piston and rod down without any rings, obviously with the big end bearing on, and we were 25 thou protrusion on the pistons. So I've removed 13 thou off the top of these pistons, so now we've got our 12 thou cut out, uh, jut out. Um, put the rings on. We've got the studs fitted in there. So that is all pretty much done now. As I say, the crank is over here, all polished and clean and what have you. Here's his bearings. We've took the top row of studs out. These are the exhaust studs. Obviously, these protrude the face of the, the head, so we'll pop them back in in a minute. Um, but that is all done. So in a minute, we're going to head over. Isaac is um, doing the Mercedes engine. I think he's sizing and balancing the rod, so we'll have a chat with him in a moment. But yeah, you can see on the cosy head here, guys, we'll stick another stick another couple of thou on that and you can see there where it hasn't cleaned in the middle that's basically means the head is sort of bowing like that it's just a, a classic trait of it very slightly overheating um, you can see around the firing area over there where it's the gaskets sort of et into it that's another trait of, of the thing getting fairly warm at some point so yeah as I say with the seats cut we put the new valves in vacuum then they all vacuum perfect He's got the springs, um, so that is Steve's job done. So I'll give him a bell in a minute. Good woods in the background. Oh, no good. No Wood. good. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas morning, is it? Every morning. <laughs> what do you think that is? Um, it was quite big. It is big. Can't think what it could be. That is a heated front windscreen for the E30. Very nice. Second channel material, but I had to mention it. Yeah. Because I'm excited. Unboxing on the second channel. Ricky then. Evans Motorsport. Oh, heated yeah. windscreen. So they do them for most stuff. Mm. Game changer. I do. Can't be doing with no Tina Turner out on track, <laughs> can we? Uh, right. I just have to mention this, mate, because I've had quite a lot of emails actually in the last few months from people saying that they're noticing different little motors and stuff in the background, little things that we don't mention on the channel. Yeah. Uh, one of which is old motorcycles that we do seem to do quite a lot of, but we never yeah. really mention them, do we? Yeah, we do quite a few. So this is an XS650 Yamaha. Uh, so this isn't that old. This is probably, what, 80s, I'd imagine. I have no idea about bikes. Really? No clue. Um, but yeah, this one's one we've done all we've done it's got new valves we've just cut the seats but you can see there you on the bikes you sometimes have some obscure sort of valve angles so they're a bit yeah. challenging to do um, but we do a lot of old stuff we do triumphs yeah bsas all that don't we yeah yeah all Quite the barrels lot, yeah. do we do the cranks fit the rods yeah um, go through the heads so do guides and so if any of you out there have got an old motorcycle and you're wondering whether we do them we do there you go send it in um, and on that note, <laughs> I'm just going to have to mention that it looks like our website is down at the moment. Yeah. So Sam from Tinted Express has just messaged me saying, um, obviously they're redoing the sign. So he's, he said, 
is your website bearhamengines.co.uk or .com? I couldn't remember. But I've just gone on to go onto the website and it ain't on there. Oh so if anyone's been trying to get hold of us via the website, there ain't one at the moment. <laughs> so you just have to email us. Um, I am in the process of having a, a website done anyway. Um, we're sort of halfway through, but we've got to get some, like you said, probably best to get some professional photos. Now it's some all nice looking a bit pictures, trick, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think that would look good on there. Yeah, so I think now we're settled a bit and we've got this pretty much done to get the website up and running, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, bear in mind, we've got no website. We seem to get a fair bit of work, don't we? Yeah. So if you're trying to get hold of us, guys, you won't get on the website. You need to just email. So that's that. Um, thirdly, today, and this is the thumbnail and title, I had a phone call off it. <laughs> I had a phone call off a bloke earlier. Now, we have tried to, definitely this side of Christmas, we've took the viewers' um, advice and tried to tighten up on the warranty side of it. Yeah. So a lot of people say that, oh God, you have a lot of warranties, but if you actually watch the videos properly, they're not, and most of the time it's not down to us. If it is down to us, there's not a problem we sort it it's just the whole reason for the the warranty thumbnail and titles and the, the content is to show you the process of the warranty whether it's yeah our fault not our fault you know most of the what time probably 95 percent of the time it's not down to us it's but a long long process you've got to go through isn't there? it is and there's different getting everyone's side of it and then there's different types of warranty it's how you deal with it depending yeah. on on what it is but the reason for this thumbnail and title is because we had a phone call. This is a prime example of what we, had, what we, we have been dealing with in the past. Um, and before we had the YouTube channel and people were sort of drumming it into me that you can't be too sort of lenient and friendly with the customers. You have to be straight to the point. Yeah. Um, so this guy rings me up earlier, did a, did a Golf R engine for him. It was a full... Golf R motor with trick bits. So it's got the rods, the pistons, all the rest of it. Um, he took it away. Obviously, we just do the bare engine. We supplied him with an uprated turbo. So he then has to go away. Like most of our engines, sort the, the get it all sorted, all the ancillaries, yeah, sort the ancillaries, the injectors, and all the rest. We get get it mapped. So most of our engines are reliant on the aftermath once they leave here that everything's done correctly. Um, so we didn't hear from him. Um, he gets back in touch with us this afternoon and says he's took it for an MOT to an MOT centre. Had it all mapped and that when he had the engine done, been running absolutely fine. Um, but he said he's got several oil leaks on the bottom end. Hmm. One of the crank seals. He said it's leaking around the breather pipe, which is a bit suspect. And I said to him, what is the crankcase pressure like? What's the breather system like? Is it standard? Are you meant to have an uprated one? You know, we're not a specialist in Golf R's. It's just that we've done the motor. And so I think what he was ringing up for was, if he sort of got to, you know, where do I stand with warranty? Mm. When it got down to it, it turns out that he's done over 10,000 miles. It's 500 horsepower and he drives it like a lunatic. <laughs> Which, <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. The engine was built to withstand that sort of power. But you need to understand that everything around it is pushed way beyond its means. Mm. Um, as I say, he ain't got a clue what breather's on it. I said, it sounds to me like you've got a breather issue. If you've got too much crankcase pressure, it's going to blow oil out wherever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to get that looked at. Um, but his MOT, I think he told the MOT guys that, what, that we'd done the motor and they suggested... Um, bring it back to us. But he obviously didn't tell them when we did it. It was the beginning of 2021. Yeah. So, no, there ain't no warranty. That's obviously a clear one. But the trouble comes when you've got things like this, it's maybe within warranty or just outside it, you need to be fairly strict with it. So I said to him, look, obviously you're miles out of warranty. You need to be realistic, but we have really toughened up with our warranty, you know, yeah. situation. Because otherwise, 
we're going to get ourselves. We start doing people favours and being a bit lenient. We're opening a whole can of worms all over the shop, mm. aren't we? Yeah. So it's very strict now, guys. If you've had an engine done by, done by us, whether it is in warranty terms or period, you need to be realistic because we're going to be looking into it. And if it's double the horsepower and you've been thrashing the nuts off it. The only alarming thing that matey did say was <laughs> the guy at the MOT place said, did he put new valves in it? And I said, no, I didn't put new valves in, but we obviously overhauled the cylinder head. Yeah. And he said, he suggested maybe doing something with the valves to get rid of some compression. And I thought, hey. well, I don't know what he's suggesting, but if he's suggesting... What, take a few out or... <laughs> I don't know, I don't quite know what he meant, but it sounds to me, I said, that sounds slightly worrying. Yeah. You know, if you have to start doing things with valves to lose compression to stop the oil being blown out the bottom end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sound, know, that do not sound Maybe good. you don't want to um, get people like just, that working on your car. Just deactivate cylinder four, innit? Take innit? all yeah. the valves out. Or just, you know, get them on, get the cams open and hit them with a hammer, innit? Yeah. You know, I don't know. But yeah, so we are tightening up with the old warranty side of it. Track engines, race engines, we're obviously, we're, we're quite reasonable people. And if it's, you know, done something, but if you've gone away and done a, hard, done a bloody track day and, or had it on the rolling road, it's like, and it's way beyond its mm. standard power output. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Got to draw the line somewhere, ain't you? Yeah. But three years, 10,000 miles and a heavy right foot. Mm. Ain't in warranty, is it? Oh, no. Bless him. And I think now he sounds like he's, it's costing well over 10 grand to get this car up and running and built and what have you. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a 500 horsepower. That's the thing. People Gone want the far, big power, yeah. but they don't really understand what the upkeep is. And I said, in effect, you, you're running a sort of race set up here, aren't you? You ain't going to be racing a car without titivating it. Mm. You're not going to do like 100,000 mile trouble free, more than likely. No. Hello, mate. Hi, buddy. You're on the Mercedes today. Yeah, thought I'd get cracking with that. Been sat around for a while, innit? So what we're doing here, looking in this uh, so in the data book. proper, an old auto data book. Handy. Um, so at the minute, I'm just trying to find the rod torques. Okay. And then here we got the book uh, for the, to find the rod housing size. So yeah. you can see the crank journal is 1.888 inches and the rod housing is 2.0315 to 2.0322. Okay, so you've got a bit of a tolerance. Usually on the housings, you've got roughly about half a thou tolerance, haven't you? Yeah, so you've got 0.7 of a thou on there. Um, so you're sizing the rods and then yeah. balancing them? Yeah. Or? I've sort of half worked out the weights of the rods already, although I will double check them once I've yeah. uh, sized them. Just get them laid out in the heaviest first. Yeah, done all that. Started measuring, uh, weighing the big ends, but nice. we'll check it again, obviously. There's plenty of meat on the, um, on the yeah. cap on these, isn't and there, they're, to take they're off? All, they're all quite close. So oh, are they? Should be quite good. Within a couple of grams. Yeah. So well, that's all right then, mate. Too bad. So that's the next step on this. Yeah. Heads all done. Heads all gone through. I think, I think the valves are all in there. Right, okay. Yeah, springs are on. Nice. So, yeah, and then once, uh, once we've got a clutch for it, yeah. I can balance the crank, John's got to polish it. Oh, okay. And then we can put the bottom end together. Excellent. So Give we ain't too far clean. away from getting the bottom end done. And then- I was gonna say, yeah, we've got, we've got bit. most of the bits apart from the clutch, haven't we? I think so, yeah, we've got, is it this drawer? Not that drawer. Well, that is a load of bits for yep. it, but. Oh yeah. Some more there. And then we've got, oh yeah, gaskets are all in here. Pistons. Yeah. All that. So it's a balancing day for you really, sizing balancing and balancing. Day, yeah. It's all fun. Yeah. So I've got to, um, I've got to get in touch with this customer here with the RS Turbo. I've tried ringing him a couple of times, but I'm sure he's a busy man. Um, we've still got to do something with the sprint block. But that's just a short motor build, isn't it? Yeah. Sprint. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we've already done the head for that and the customer's already got it back, so. Ideal. How are you getting on with your Subaru? 
Well, stayed on a little bit last night. Yeah. Uh, aiming to get this all, you know, the main the main um, bolts all talked up, really. Yeah. Ran into a little bit of a problem on the very last bolt. Oh, right. So that bolt hole there, the thread, I don't know, what do you reckon, Lee? Thread looks all right, don't it? Thread looks good to me, mate. Boy, what's the problem? This is one of the eight mil bolts on the outside, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so. To the, these are the main ones in the, in the middle, yeah? Water jacket and then ones. you've got some eight mil ones that go around the outside that basically just seal the yeah. outside of the block. So what's the problem? Well, so I was doing an initial torque of twenty foot pound on all of them. Yeah. And all was all was fine. Got to that one, just kept turning. I thought this is a bit weird. So I took it out, checked it all, made sure there was no crap on it or anything. Yeah. And it was all fine. Went to do it again, just kept turning, turning, and then. Got the is bolt. this a new bolt? Are these it's new a brand bolts? new bolt, yeah. Really? Brand new bolt. Let me grab it. You can see there. Oh yeah, you can see if I get some focus, you can see here where the bolt started to stretch. Yeah, so that's gonna And once go. they stretch, they just go and that's yeah. the end of it. You just talk it to I Evan. So I don't know That's strange. I don't know whether to I've I have run a tap through that thread just to make sure and it went in fine and I want any or good stuff in there or anything. So. Strange that, mate. We're going to have to get another new bolt. All the rest are all right, though. Yeah, all the rest were fine, but we'll see when I... I think, if I remember rightly, I think I've got to talk those 8 mil ones up a bit more than that, so okay. I, whether I might run into other problems. Yeah, that's know. strange, that is, for a new bolt to do it. We'll I see. wondered Definitely whether a bit of that. silicon had got on there and... Yeah, but maybe. I did clean it, didn't, it off. It didn't take much. Yeah. Oh, well. New bolt. New Try bolt. again. But you're getting there though, mate. Getting there. Gonna probably come in this weekend, try and come in. Uh, annoy the missus a bit, but <laughs> probably try and come in and um, you get gotta some do more sometimes. Done. Gotta yeah. do gotta do it sometimes. Thing is it's all well and good like staying an hour or so after work, but you really need a fair Yeah, you don't of seem time. to get a lot done in an hour, do you? But if you stay for an entire morning, yeah. But she ain't gonna have that. No, probably not, but we'll, we'll mind, give it a mate. go. We'll get it done soon. Yeah. It's looking nice anyway. Yeah. So that's nearly all we've got time for, guys. I have just finished boring Wayne Greatrix's block. You can see that is a lovely bronzy color. Um, and that is because it's been sandblasted and um, now we've got to clean it up. So we've removed the core plug. So I'm going to put this now, it's, built, it's been bored. Obviously before I hone it, I'm going to put it in our vapor blaster and give it a good, um, get that rust off, give it a good blast. Then I'm going to finish hone it and that block is pretty much done then, guys. But that's it. Until Friday's video, have a lovely evening. We'll see you then. Thanks, guys.